Hello and welcome to Headlights Today. I'm B.R. Fitter. We begin with news of Defence Minister Arun Jaitley, who visited the headquarters of India's Western Naval Command in Mumbai today. He was accompanied by Navy Chief Admiral Robin Dhawan. The Defence Minister also visited a shipyard where the badly damaged INS Sindhu Rakshak had been salvaged. The submarine sank following explosions on board last August, killing 18 people. Jaitley is believed to have spoken with several officers from the Navy about the spate of accidents with naval ships in recent months. At least 12 of them have occurred since August last year. The series of incidents led to the resignation of the former Navy Chief Admiral D.K. Joshi. Jaitley said the cause of rising mishaps must be ascertained to prevent them in the future. The Defence Minister also said coastal surveillance would be strengthened to thwart threats to security. He's also commissioned two new fast attack craft the, IC, the Indian Coast Guard ship Achuk and ICGS Agreem of, uh, on, on the western coast. I think the, all the services are doing uh, an excellent uh, work for the, in securing this country. Uh, the major challenges are that uh, we need more procurement and we need faster procurement. I call it challenging times, not not trouble times. I think uh, they still uh, secure us, so I, I won't call it trouble times. Two Indian Coast Guard ships, ICGS Achuk and ICGS Agrim, were commissioned at the hands of Defence Minister Arun Jaitley in Mumbai today. The 50-meter indigenous fast patrol vessel can achieve a maximum speed of 33 knots. The vessels are equipped with a state-of-art weaponry and advanced communication and navigational equipment. These vessels can undertake multiferous close coast missions such as surveillance, interdiction, search and rescue and medical evacuation. Given the constant threat at the seas, the government is planning to buy 150 uh, boats and ships and also uh, 100 aircrafts in uh, a time frame of another five years. With camera person Raju Revankar, Kamlesh Sutar in Mumbai, Fight Lines today. And Kamlesh Sutar is now with us from Mumbai uh, for more on that visit. Uh, Kamlesh, you were talking about these two Coast Guard ships that uh, were commissioned into uh, the Indian Coast Guard for, for more patrolling, particularly on the western coast. But what about the Navy? Because we were talking earlier about the spate of accidents. Uh, Mumbai itself has been uh, the scene to, to some of them, including that of the Sindhu Rakshak. Any word on how, that's, uh, how they plan to tackle that? Uh, well, Pierre, uh, that was uh, one question which the media wanted to ask to the uh, new defence minister, but uh, he categorically chose uh, not to reply any of these queries. Uh, in fact, when we asked him questions about uh, uh, Sindhu Rakshak, which he visited uh, early this morning, he said that uh, he has uh, been briefed regularly by uh, the Navy officials and uh, the problem should be uh, left to the Navy uh, to, uh, to assess. Uh, uh, in fact, there was a lot of curiosity over uh, 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 the Defence Minister's visit to INS Sindhu Rakshak, which was salvaged just uh, 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 a few days before the, uh, the salvage operations uh, were completed. Uh, and uh, perhaps he is the first uh, uh, high-profile dignitary to visit uh, it uh, and uh, have a first-hand glance and discussion with the Navy officials about the salvage operation and the reasons behind uh, what exactly happened. But uh, at this point of time, uh, the Defence Minister uh, chose not to say anything on that and he left it to the Navy uh, and said that the Navy is best suited to assess uh, the situation. All right, Kabilesh, many thanks for that update from Mumbai. Uh, the Defence Minister taking charge. He is, it should be mentioned, an interim minister that uh, permanent, uh, a permanent position will be filled in a couple of weeks. Uh, staying with news from Mumbai, though, one of the most important public infrastructure projects in that city will come to life on Sunday. The first phase of the Mumbai Metro Rail, which covers the Varsova and Delhi Ghatkopar Mumbai. route, will begin operations tomorrow. The 11.4 kilometer long east west corridor will have 12 stations and has been built at a cost of roughly 2,300 crore rupees. A construction began in February 2006. All phases are expected to be complete by 2021. Finally, Mumbai Metro will be open for public from Sunday. It's a long wait for Mumbai cars. It was supposed to start in 2010. But finally, this 11-kilometer stretch will be open for uh, Mumbai cars uh, from Varsova to Ghatkopa. And uh, the fare is going to be around 10 to 40 rupees. Uh, 
it's a capacity is around 11 to 12 lakh people every day uh, at the same time as you can see the station uh, they have made at some places it's a very congested stations uh, but uh, with the, with the four minutes frequency uh, the uh, they, they claim that this metro is going to be quite efficient uh, at non peak hours it's going to be seven minutes frequency uh, and around 200 to 250 uh, uh, trains will be running every day uh, for Mumbai cars, uh, whereas uh, 1,500 people can be accommodated in one train. Uh, we can go inside and we can show you how uh, they have made this uh, Mumbai metro. As you can see that there is more space uh, for people for standing and uh, less lesser space for sitting. It's fully air conditioned and uh, Mumbai cars who are not used to having such a comfort uh, will definitely be surprised, uh, will be having a good time in this Mumbai metro. Uh, though Mumbai Metro 1 uh, will be travelling horizontally in Mumbai, uh, that is, will be connecting the eastern suburbs to the western suburbs, but Mumbai cars are definitely waiting for more metros like this, though this project took quite a long time, but are expecting that uh, the other parts of Mumbai will also see Mumbai Metro running for Mumbai cars. Sahil Joshi in Mumbai for headlines today. Amrita Shekde is with us for more on the Mumbai Metro, which launches tomorrow. Amrita, I've, I've lived in Mumbai. I, I know what the local trains are like. And uh, they, this looks like an absolute dream for Mumbai cars, doesn't it? Yes, it is. And Mumbai cars are happy because their own Mumbai Metro will be starting from tomorrow. Today also there were some passengers. They travelled uh, and uh, uh, they just got a trial run of metro and they were very happy excited because uh, this is the first metro this is the first phase though there are three phases and uh, this is the first phase that will be starting from tomorrow and mumbai cars are happy the first phase will start tomorrow at five in the morning and that will go till uh, midnight and uh, the carrying capacity of one metro train is almost 1500 passengers and there are such six uh, metro trains and each train will be containing of uh, uh, six co co different coaches and each coach will carry almost uh, 300 passengers and almost 11 to 12 uh, lakhs of passengers will travel per day. So this is a very convenient mode for Mumbai cars because Mumbai is always considered as a uh, traffic uh, uh, at city which uh, is, always experiences the traffic jam. So this is a very convenient way for Mumbai cars and uh, so Mumbai cars are really happy. Back to you. All right, we, we've got some interesting breaking news coming in related to this. Uh, Amrita, if you can stay with us, we're hearing that Maharashtra's chief minister has said that the inaugural tariff for Mumbai's metro will remain on the books. Remember, the BJP uh, had, uh, had been, uh, uh, or rather we should say that uh, there had been opposition to allowing this inaugural tariff to, to continue. The original ticket prices were 9, 11, and 13 rupees. Reliance, Indus, uh, Reliance Infrastructure, which is owned by Anil Ambani, wants those prices increased to 10, 20, and 30 rupees. Uh, the Chief Minister said that uh, he had uh, approached the High Court against a tariff hike and has also sent a notice to the Lions to not increase the tariffs. All right, Kamlesh Sathar joins us for more on this story. Kamlesh, uh, all of this happening even as the Mumbai Metro launches its first phase tomorrow, uh, but uh, the Maharashtra Chief Minister seemingly batting for the public in this case and saying well, we, we can't allow the tariffs to go beyond the inaugural fares. Uh, well, Pierre, the metro inauguration is slowly turning out to be a political uh, turf of battle between the BJP and the Congress. And uh, from the Congress, the Chief Minister himself is leading the charge. The Chief Minister has uh, clearly opposed the raise in tariffs of metro. Now, there was a lot of controversy over what the fair slabs of metro is going to be. Uh, the earlier slab, which is mentioned in the earlier tender when the metro was commissioned, it was uh, between 9 and 13 rupees. But uh, now, with the metro coming into force, with the metro becoming operational in Mumbai, the slab is the, the tariff slab is between 10 and 40 rupees, to which the Congress is opposed. The Congress, uh, chief, uh, the Congress is saying that they certainly not tolerate such uh, a tariff hike. The Chief Minister says that he has accepted the invitation to inaugurate the uh, metro tomorrow only on the condition that the fares will remain what it was mentioned in the earlier tenders that is nine, between 9 rupees and 13 rupees. The Chief Minister has also gone on to allege that the BJP is hand in glove with the Reliance and uh, it is supporting Reliance in, in uh, asking for bigger fares. Now, uh, the, uh, there, was, there was a lot of uh, uh, there was a war of words between the Congress and uh, the BJP for last few days over the inauguration and the delays in Metro. 
but somehow immediately after the bjp came into power at the center some bjp leaders from mumbai uh, were uh, pursuing this matter and said that the metro can be started any time soon after receiving the final certificate uh, bjp uh, M uh, mp's uh, uh, in mumbai had gone on to uh, uh, thre uh, threaten that they will start the metro inaugurate the metro uh, if the state government uh, keeps dilly dallying on the matter giving uh, on that background given on that background the metro is to be inaugurated tomorrow but the congress uh, has not taken this very lightly the chief minister himself leading the charge saying that he is opposed to the fair hike if at all reliance wants its way it should go to the tariff fixation committee that is to the high court if the high court says mm -hmm. the state government has no uh, issues in uh, accepting the fair uh, the tariff hike but for now uh, the congress uh, say uh, the chief minister uh, who belongs to the congress party says that uh, they uh, the tariff hike uh, given by the uh, metro is not acceptable to them so in days to come this will certainly uh, snowball into another political controversy even uh, as the metro is inaugurated uh, uh, in mumbai well i can tell mumbai cars this and i've lived in both cities uh, they they're paying fair prices if even if the hike goes through it's what we pay in delhi as well but politics is politics and uh, at least there's a nice infrastructure project that comes up for the city tomorrow